Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Better Life with Dr. Pinkston. I am Dr. Marianne Pinkston, and as usual, I try to bring you the best of the best in information on trying to better your life, and today is absolutely no exception. I think today is probably the pinnacle of my career, as I have somebody on today who is very, very instrumental in my success story in losing 170 pounds. Uh, when I started way back uh, six or seven years ago, I got in into a set of uh, books and a magazine, a couple of magazines that absolutely started my story on learning how to eat well. As a doctor, you know, you don't always eat well. You don't really know your trade. You can't, you know your trade, but you don't really do what you, uh, you know, you tell your patients to do. But uh, in turning this around, I have the creator of the Eat Clean Revolution as stated by Dr. Oz Toscarino. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. And so jumping right in, how did you come to the Eat Clean Revolution and, and the magazines and all? <laughs> Wow, uh, I, I fell into it, to be honest. Um, I was overweight um, at a time that was uh, very challenging for me in my life and decided that I would just go to the gym and make radical changes. You know, it seems like when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Right. And so I really had no clear vision other than, oh, well, I'm you know, going to work out. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to run. I didn't know the piece about diet. Right. And, and so what I since have learned is that there's this this arc of wellness as defined by the World Health Organization, which includes the exercise that we do, which 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 we normally think is the way we're going to lose weight. Then we do eating clean, which is the new thing, and then emotional self-care. Well, I really only had that that one card in my hand, so started working out. And as luck would have it, um, intersected with the publisher and bodybuilding icon in North America mm -hmm. for a long time, uh, Robert Kennedy. And the rest, as they say, is history. But really, it was literally me just saying, all right, that's enough of that. I cannot stand being 204 pounds. This has got to end. Absolutely. I, I came to that same moment and, and patients ask me all the time, how do I become you? And I'm just like, you know, at some point you're just going to be tired of it and, and mm -hmm. it will just wash over you and it's time to move on. So it's kind of enlightening to know that you came to the same self-realization. Oh, yeah. So eating clean, what is kind of the definition of eating clean? If you could put it into a definition. <laughs> so I love to talk about eating clean as a lifestyle yes. way of eating that allows you to maintain a healthy weight and also achieve wellness, which is literally the state that the body wants to be in anyway. So it's not a subtractive exercise other than getting rid of the processed foods and eating clean, nutrient dense, whole, properly prepared, well sourced foods. Absolutely. What does that mean? <laughs> it means a lot of stuff that grows from the earth and is prepared in a natural and or traditional way. Sure. Yeah, spices and good things. You know, the, it really is a wonderful way to eat. It's very hard to transition over, though. So a lot of uh, people are yeah. so used to stopping in the fast food, you know, stores or, I mean, the fast food restaurants or, you know, into the store, just box meals, things that are quick yeah. and easy. I think yeah. things have changed a lot since you have started, you know, what you started. I think you are the reason a lot of this has changed. <laughs> but it's hard for people to transition over. Do you have any yes. advice for people just getting started? Well, I do, um, because I think, Here's a key piece of something that we don't necessarily understand when we when we are seduced by the processed foods. First of all, the experience of walking into the grocery store. Right. Did you know that if you removed all the processed foods in a grocery store, you would only be left with what's on the perimeter. And that is only about 20% of the product offerings in a grocery store. Secondly, that the experience of eating all these processed and refined foods have has destroyed our gut microbiota so that if you at all are feeling bloat, distension, gas, discomfort, constipation, or even diarrhea at the other end, probably something about your diet is telling you this is not working. And so if we can go back to eating more traditional foods and eat clean so that you're getting a good 
four, five, six, seven servings of greens in your day, right. your gut microbiota is going to respond. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You've crossed over into my world there big time because that the gut and uh, the microbiome are absolutely huge. It's something I preach every day. I've studied, you know, immensely and uh, very adamant about. So thank you for mentioning that because that is huge. And so in, you know, feeding your body and, you know, trying to get into shape, I, you know, I frequently tell patients about the mix of dieting and, or not dieting, excuse me, let's rephrase that lifestyle, huh. right? Yeah, Very right. No fad diets, get diet out of your mind, but lifestyle <laughs> and uh, exercise. What is kind of your quotient there? I, I tell people kind of it's an 80, 20, maybe even a 90, 10 type of thing, but what is your quotient? Yeah. So I'm 80, 10, 10. Okay. 80, so I call it the body, beautiful body healthy formula and 80% of what we do with our daily activities it depends on what we eat because yeah. we have to eat five to six small meals per day 365 days of the year yeah. so you got to get that math right mm -hmm. and that is the foundation of it all then 10% is exercise right. but much like vitamins in your in your eating plan eating, eating patterns if you miss out a vitamin it's a very small piece of it but you might get rickets or scurvy so sure. it's important sure. uh, so exercise 10% and then 10% is genetics and so you can see by that that formula a great deal of it really 90 percent is within your power to right. influence or affect right. and when you think about it that way and you have a plate in your hands you think yeah. well what am i going to put on this plate that will influence the way i show up every day the way i feel the way i look the way i think and the way i give back to my human family Beautiful. and when i think about it that way yeah. it changes everything yeah that that is a great visual right there i'm going to take a picture of that <laughs> and that's <laughs> going to go on social media all next week that's amazing so and i thought actually that the the 80 10 10 was going to be something kind of spiritual related <laughs> Maybe. So maybe we got to kick in a two or five percent in there really for well, well, we'll get in there. We can talk about spiritual. Don't you worry. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Because that is a huge part of it, too, because stress. So stress is something we, uh, you know, probably 20 years ago, I thought I had stress. Now, I understand stress and it's so different now. I think this instant gratification world and, you know, social media and comparing yourself to the Joneses and the grass is always greener. I just, you know, a mom, a, a, a you know, a business owner and a, now a, a podcaster, all these things. And so there's just so many things that are going mm -hmm. on with stress interferes with sleep. So sleep is another thing. I mean, there's such a long list of things about taking yes. care of yourself. How do you do it all? Uh, the, you know, I don't think that I knew the significance of emotional self-care until the bottom dropped out of my life. I literally had a Cinderella story when I began to lose weight and was discovered by Robert Kennedy and then started getting magazine covers and TV shows and traveling around the world, becoming a New York Times bestselling author. I had an incredible ride. Yeah. But Cinderella, you know, her life turned to ashes and mine did too. The bottom fell out. So in 2011, my stepson died between Robert and I. Uh, our son died 24 years old. And then Robert passed a year later. And then a year after that, I was forced to bankrupt his publishing business, which housed all of my right. if you will, income earning uh, capabilities. So, you know, I had to learn very fast that uh, it's not just diet and exercise. You also need a spiritual component and I began to meditate which I go spitting nails like who has time to meditate right. now I can't go to bed or wake up without doing a meditation first right. so the first thing in the morning I've got my water and then I'm putting on a meditation and that's how I begin my day Beautiful. why do I do that because for myself, I know that I have to tap into the greater realm of possibilities, which doesn't always lie closest to my heart in my busy day. Absolutely. I have to tap into it when I'm closest to my subconscious mind, right. which is in the morning for the first two hours or in the evening when you're just slipping off to sleep. And meditation, I would say, has saved my life. Wow. That's really powerful. 
And I'm glad you said that. And thank you for being so vulnerable. I know, I know it's a, it's a, a huge story, a deep story. And you are mm-hmm. a woman of significant resilience. And uh, uh, it takes a, a farmer to know, or a fisherman to know a fisherman, you know, from afar, uh, have a similar, very uh, similar story. And, and I appreciate you being very vulnerable about that. Because I think a lot of women go through this type of issue. And, and it doesn't really matter how deep and how dark it gets. Everybody has their perception of their world that is deep and dark. And so uh, I think in, in sharing that, women need to re- touch with them with them, themselves I guess so I'm kind of kind of uh, discombobulated at the moment because it's really really significant you know this is a huge story for both of us I think but you know women do need to touch base within themselves of how deep and dark it can get but that it's not and that's not an endless hole to fall into. No, there's a way up, there's a way out, and you know you just gotta connect. You gotta connect with each other. You gotta connect with the the universe, with God, whatever your you yes. know whatever your connection is and, and your needs are, but with yourself. So we spend a lot of time, I think, focusing on connecting with others or God or whatnot. We forget about uh, us. We are God. We are a piece of of God. We are a piece of the universe. We have, again, however you want to see it. But we do need to, to focus on that. That's hard. Sometimes you got to fall all the way down to figure that yes, out. You yes, you do. And definitely I did. And wow, you did. For, no. for a long time, like yourself, probably, I was angry because I couldn't see the greater picture. I didn't understand all the things that had happened to me. And I just wanted to be mad at the world. I wanted to blame yeah. everybody else. Yeah. But the, the beauty of meditation and why I say it saved my life is it gave me a place to begin to make sense of all of the things that had happened to me. And if I had remained angry, I would not have evolved as a person. So there is a purpose in the medicine of meditation. There's a purpose in the medicine of loss and trauma. Right. And when we can reframe our scenarios, our situations, our life events to purpose and meaning, which you can't see necessarily right away, then that gives you a greater sense of being present with yourself because we are all a spark of the divine. And I began to think of the tough lessons in my life as, well, thank you, Robert, for putting your hand up and teaching me that lesson. Or thank you, tough coach, whoever taught me a difficult lesson was something obviously I needed to learn. Sure. That's so true. That's so true. Gratitude. Isn't that a tough concept? Gratitude. There's a lot of tough ones out there. Forgiveness is up there too. <laughs> right? That's one of those things. I still have to master that. I'm working on it. So <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for kind of taking a step in that way for me and my life as well. I can look up to that as well because it, it really is gratitude and, and self-love is a very, very tough place to be. Women, I think, have a, a particularly more difficult time with it just because we're serving everybody else. Um, I think yes. I mentioned to you, I was trying, I'm trying to write a book called The Superwoman Syndrome. And I think that we, in serving everybody else, we uh, do that to a detriment. And we, you know, I think it's going to increase morbidity and mortality. So increase diseases and, and death for women, ultimately, because we spend so much time in serving others. When really, what do they say? You know, the you get on the airplane and the flight attendant says, you know, if the oxygen disappears, you put on your mask first before you put on somebody else's we Mm -hmm. do not do that we are not practiced at that at all and if we would i think we'd be so much better at serving others that's a another tough lesson uh, to learn as well have you experienced that oh um yes and i would say (laughs) that i got myself into the state of obesity emotionally right emotional eating through numbing a lot of things that i wanted to not look at and explore because it takes a bit of courage to get to that place but um i I call those emotional traumas and they're all there for a reason and i gave up the superwoman syndrome when i saw that i was a better person just being vulnerable and human absolutely yeah that is so true and the obesity thing too um, and did the same thing, you know, getting to 300 pounds. How does somebody went to medical school and, you know, raised herself as a, as a kid, so resilient and tough, you know, let herself get to that point. Now, I had an illness, rheumatoid arthritis, took a lot of steroids. There was a lot of factors in there. Right. I didn't have to get to that point. But that is a lot of emotional baggage that somebody is carrying. And um, mm-hmm. so I don't know if you experienced quite the same thing, but that was that was yeah. it for me. Yes. 
my first relationship in the, the, the one that I became overweight in um, as, a, as a way of numbing myself. Uh, my husband was a violent man. He was domestically abusive. So it took me, he gave me beautiful children. I'm grateful for that. He taught me how to be a warrior. But I had to leave that situation in order to become well because I knew that I was literally dying. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to go through that too. That is something I had to experience as well. Wow. We do have a lot in common, my friend, and I am so... This is from another mister. <laughs> right? I know. Seriously. So I'm so appreciative, again, for that vulnerability. So we're going to take a short break in just a minute. I do want people to know about uh, something you have coming up. So I think I, you called it the Spring Cleanse. This starts in yes. April. You coach. Yes. You actually work with people and, and yes. uh, coach. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. So the Spring Cleanse program is a wonderful way to give yourself a reset and a thorough nutritional uh, clean out, if you will, uh, because I don't think the poop in the box detoxes are good for you. So eating properly through foods that nourish at this particular time of year yeah. with particular molecules and antioxidants that we need is much more powerful. So Toscarino.com Spring Cleanse, that's where you want to be. Yes. So I will have all of that on my website. So drpbetterlife.com is where people can come and look for Tosca and her spring cleanse. That will get started April 3rd. I think that's wonderful. I think everybody ought to look into it. So I'm going to send people your way. I think it's wonderful. So toscarino.com. And I'll, again, I'll have that. Spell, spell that out. I know I'm going to flub it up. So <laughs> spell that out for everybody. Okay. Tosca, like the opera, T-O-S-C-A. A Reno R E N O dot com Toscarino dot com and then drpbetterlife.com is where you, you can go. find it. There you go. So you can find all that information plus all of the um, social media platforms that where you can find her and uh, find me and all of the platforms for the podcast, YouTube, and all of those links. And so we uh -huh. will have that. We are going to take a very short break. Come back on the other side and continue this wonderful discussion. Thank you. Fatty liver is linked to two different situations, alcohol and diabetes or obesity. In both cases, patients can have no symptoms. In the United States and in particular, Texas, the most common cause of liver disease in general is non-alcoholic fatty liver. Again, associated with overweight, obesity, and or diabetes. Additional risk factors include high cholesterol, high blood pressure, Hispanic ethnicity, and postmenopausal status. At Pinnacle Clinical Research, we offer a quick, non-invasive, ultrasound-based screening assessment called FibroScan. This test is done at no cost to you and we do not take insurance. The test will measure the fat and stiffness in your liver and state your risk and development of fatty liver disease. You will meet with a provider immediately following your scan to go over your results. If you're interested in getting more information on your liver health, please call 210-982-0320 and schedule your FibroScan today. We are conveniently located in the Medical Center at 5109 Medical Drive. Welcome back. I am Dr. Pinkston. I am here with Tosca Reno, who is somebody that I absolutely admire and emulate. I'm trying to follow in her footsteps. And so we've been talking a lot about many things about uh, obesity, about uh, eating clean as a revolution she uh, came up with years ago and I followed in my weight loss. And so we also talked about your spring cleanse coming up yes. on April 3rd. They can find that on the website. But you have a membership platform and a digital magazine called Raise the Bar, which sounds beautiful. Tell us about that. Well, I love the story. This is honoring what I used to write in Oxygen magazine. Um, but as a result of bankruptcy, I had to sell all the magazines. So they went over to another uh, media outlet. Regardless, Raise the Bar was mine. And so I had this idea to come back to Raise the Bar and offer it to my audience because, you know, I read and understand from all the personal development coaches like Jim Rohn, you have to listen and read and listen and read and work on your personal development almost more than you work on your business so what i want to offer with raise the bar is this deliciousness every month that contains inspiration to keep women on the right path who are trying to give themselves the opportunity to 
develop into their most well selves. So what does that look like? Well, it means you need to read stories of other women who have changed their lives, who have achieved wellness, who have lost weight like you and I have. You want to hear about the workouts that are going to keep you smart and efficient in the gym. You want menu plans or you want to know about the foods that are really going to knock it out of the park for you in this particular season. For example, April issues coming up and I am talking about those kinds of foods that are most widely available available at that time of year. Things like spinach, little green shoots, asparagus with that beautiful glutathione molecule in it. Um, We also have incredible inspirational interviews. Uh, In fact, I'm going to tease this for my Raise the Bar membership, which is only $27 a month. It's an amazing offering. Um, uh, Next month, April, I have the former Dalai Lama, a former ND to the Dalai Lama. And I also have the founder of the whole Reba founder revolution, uh, David Hall. So there's going to be some really fabulous stories as well as a conversation about fertility and hormones with a uh, particular ND who focuses on natural ways to ride out the hormonal wave, if you will. Um, You know, we have menu plans, just so much. There's so much there. I think it's really good, a good investment if you are someone dedicated to taking care of yourself and becoming your most optimal self. Absolutely. Okay, so $27 a month is what I used to spend on Starbucks trying to keep myself awake every right? day. That is an easy <laughs> sacrifice for people to make, honestly, to better their health. And, you know, at this, what you're doing there is something that I looked for in the past. And I wish I could have, you know, had the means and, and abilities to, you know, come up with that because I think that is what is needed. I think the it good, it sounds like wonderful information. You mentioned glutathione. Again, you're, you're coming into my Yes. I love, you know, I love integrative medicine, love functional medicine, and I uh, have studied it for a very long time. Hormones is just absolutely my huge niche. And and yeah. so that, that those are things that we need to focus on and, and listen to the spiritual side, the business side. The, yes, you know, all of it. All of that. Yeah. So you bring yeah. that all together. So 27, raise the bar, right? Raise 27, the bar. They can yes. go to your website, yeah. I'm sure. And yes. And, yes, uh, you can find it there. Um, you know, I wanted to bring up something else. We were talking about the spiritual, and I wanted to just tap into. Um, I recently lost my mother. Oh. And she was a massive inspiration for me Sorry. in all of my life because she was a resilient soul. And uh, so this sort of touches on to what's going to be happening next for me is um, I am working with a new book agent and I'm going to dedicate this new book that we're working on together to my mother, Wonderful. who in the last few minutes of her life, she pulled me close to her and said, you know, Tosca, I gave you the best of myself. I gave you my lion heart. So I want you to go out there and live a big life. And that message really resonates with me. And now being able to work on a new book project, it's something that's dear to my heart. I want to repeat my New York Times bestseller status. Uh, And mostly it is about serving my human family because I know so much as you, Marianne, you've been through loss, financial difficulty, rebuilding, starting over myself. So many times I've lost people close to me. We've been through re re uh, vitalizing ourselves, losing weight, et cetera. And in a way, you become an expert in these things. So we have an obligation to share this with our human sisters and brothers. And that's what this is about. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. And we're very much aligned that way. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm Misty now. So that's that's amazing. I'm so sorry. So sorry about your mom. But what a gift. I gave you the best it's of myself. Beautiful. Yeah. That's intense. And um, thank you. I appreciate that. And we do. You're right. I think we do have an absolute obligation to feed this forward. I don't think mm-hmm. that I could, I guess, you know, in my the life uh, thinking that all of that went to waste, you know, mm-hmm. that I kept all of it inside, kept it, you know, kept angry and kept um, hateful uh, feelings for, you know, people who didn't do me right or, you know, whatnot. Yes. Actually, you, you you said it yourself that you have gratitude for those things, that they gave you yeah. uh, a better way to look at things. But it's a choice. It was it a, is choice. a choice. Yeah. It was a choice yeah. to take a look at those uh, dark times and uh, move it forward and make the best out of it. 
And again, I think if we don't feed it forward, then what a waste, you know? If yes. I'm so looking bad. under the hood of ourselves, right. taking a peek and saying, what about me brought those circumstances into my life? And what do I need to learn from this? Right. That takes a lot of courage. So I give it right back yeah. to you and to anybody listening who's been able to delve into those aspects of themselves. It doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you a more evolved person. Absolutely. You are so absolutely right. Thank you. You've been so such a wonderful, wonderful blessing and not just a guest, not just uh, uh, somebody I look up to, but an absolute blessing to be on today. And I, I absolutely appreciate it so much. This is a great discussion. And I hope that uh, somebody listening is is uh, profoundly touched by it all because this is this is this is what it is right here. This is life. This is this is what we are trying to accomplish. And, and this is what we all need to do. Eat better. Think better make better choices, reach out to each other, and uh, just take care of ourselves ultimately to take care of other people. It's the right thing to do. But So few uh, words tying things up. Again, how can people reach you? All right. So my name is Tosca Reno, founder of the Eat Clean Revolution. Some people call me the OG, and I like to think I am. (laughs) And you can find me at ToscaReno.com pretty much anywhere. So that will be on Instagram. It'll be on Facebook. And it'll be that's my website as well. I answer all my emails. So if you, you have a question do. for me. I, that yes. was, I was insanely happy that you answered me on uh, on Facebook. I think that was. So thank you for that. And I'm aligned with Marianne on helping to serve you as my human sisters and brothers. We're going to do everything we can for that is my purpose in life. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having a listen today. Absolutely. Thank you for being on. And you can go to drpbetterlife.com and you can find all of this information on Raise the Bar and our Spring Cleanse that's starting soon and all of her great books, all of which I have and have uh, and a new one coming uh, up soon. Uh, all the yeah. blessings in the world for that. Good luck. And so drpbetterlife.com, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. Tosca Reno, thank you. And you have a blessed week as well. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.